Right, welcome to this Tactica and Showcase video. It's for Space Wolves, and we'll take a look at Wolfen here, one of the harder hitting units uh, for the Space Wolves. I have a unit of five of them in my new list. I've, I've, I've been using them in games, but not to their full potential. There's loads of rules with these that can uh, be easily forgotten. So this tactic is to help you get the most out of these, uh, the most out of this unit here to make it as uh, it's a potent unit, but only if you use it. Uh, correctly and there's some certain sort of I've got some tips here to try and uh, help you get the most out of this unit to, and try and make it as effective as possible in your games of Warhammer 40,000 uh, this is a showcase video so I'll take a look at the models as well so the head and shoulders above regular space rings very um, tall and big poses on these we'll zoom in and take a look at these in just a moment but I've got the five wolf in here and they on the same kind of size base as Terminators. There they are. Uh, we'll zoom in here and take a look. So there's one of them here with these uh, the wolf and claws or these frost claws. I think you can use them as as well. So these have been painted up on commission for me uh, by Siege Studios. Uh, great job they've done. You can see the glossy effect varnish they've added to these claws here. And uh, nice work on the flesh as well. It's well painted. Nicely done. There's him. And you get the Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield option. Look at these uh, embossed shields here. Beautiful work. Very nice. There's one. And then the other one here with the Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield. And then uh, the Great Frost Axe. Got two of them. Got this guy holding the skull. Again, see that glistening effect there on the ice uh, for these axes. Not sure why he's looking at a skull. <laughs> Not entirely sure. They've got these launchers here on the back as well. You can see them been added on. And there's a two-handed version of the axe just there. Nice. It's a, it's a unit with a nasty punch behind it. Deadly unit. So it's a unit you really want to make uh, the best use of. But there it is. That's Seed Studios painted those up for me, Commission. Very nice work from them. You can check them out uh, and get in contact with them for quotes for your own uh, commission work. So, yeah, as I said at the start there, I've used Wolfen in uh, all the uh, most of the games I've played with the Space Wolves. As soon as they were available, as soon as they were painted up. And uh, see, there they are, fighting away, getting stuck into close combat. That's the theme for them. Just chuck him into combat against anything. Great models. God. Yeah, they are. They are good models. It's a bit of a. There was a bit of a, a fuss when these were first released. People trying to get their heads around the, the justification for having them in. And not the type of unit that the Ultramarines would be happy with. <laughs> so, but um, just one of those unique. I think I, I like. I like having them in the army because it's one of those unique units. Uh, for the space wars in that no one else can take which uh means that I, I like the idea of them so it's power level 11 for the wolf pack leader and then uh, four wolf and so unit of five you can take five more so you can go to unit of 10. Uh, each wolf and fights his wolf and claws and wolf and pack leader is armed with frost claws that's the standard loadout uh, for these let's just get out i think they're 30 points to start off with here 28 points to tie rights. 28 points plus your points on top of that. Uh, so, Wolf and Claws are zero. And the Frost Claws are 15 points. We'll come to the weapon stats in just a moment. Uh, movement seven, so they're, they're fast stuff, just an inch quicker than regular Space Marines. Add weapon skill three plus, ballistic skill five plus, really not for shooting these. Strength five, which is excellent. Toughness four. Two wounds, three attacks base, which is superb. Leadership seven and a four up save. And then the Wolf and Pack Leader gets uh, an extra attack. No extra leadership though. Yeah, they still get Ocean and No Fear though. Okay. Uh, and then an extra attacks of four attacks, which again is absolutely fantastic. Um, so, says here any model may take a Storm Frag auto launcher. So the Stormfrag Auto Launcher is uh, four points out of them. Uh, 
yeah, four points of time. And that weapon is Assault D3, range 12, strength 4, AP0, 1 damage. I, this is going to be an expensive unit, and I, I wouldn't bother taking the shooting ability because you're hitting on 5 plus, and you know, range 12 assault D3 uh, is just completely not worth it, I don't think. So, maybe it was, if it was assault D6, then yes, I'd sort of consider it. But uh, 5 plus to hit, then if you're moving in advance, then you can still shoot, but it'll be sixes. So, um, yeah, you could spend the points on other things. So, no, I wouldn't take those. Then any wolf may replace their wolf and claws with frost claws, a great frost axe, or a thunder hammer and storm shield. Okay, so that's the options. And you can see the unit I've got here, uh, it's a mixed configuration. Yeah, so one of them here, I, I leave this guy, but I know he's, this is probably the frost claw uh, configuration, but I, I give him the option of either taking uh, wolf claws or frost claws uh, depending on what points I'm trying to squeeze into the list and then the others is two of these great frost axes and then two thunder hammers and storm shields so a lot of combat punching ability here as you'll see uh, so just to give you a cost here the great frost axe Yeah, well, storm shields are definitely worth taking now, especially because they're two points a time. It's super cheap to take storm shields, so definitely uh, worth worth at least taking two. I've got two here, maybe more, because uh, you have to take storm shield and the thunder hammer. Uh, I would, I would take. Yeah, I would take. A dream combo would be this combination here, and then maybe take that guy and give him a uh, Thunder Storm Shield. Another one. So you've got three models of that 3 plus in one save, and it's cheap to arm them with those shields as well. Great, you know, it's protection against shooting, but the opponents are going to try and bring these down with firepower, and then in close combat as well. So definitely an option. Uh, the Thunder Hammer is 16 points time, which isn't bad for the amount of damage uh, that it can cause. Then the Great Frost Axe is 17 points a time, so Thunder Hammer's mildly cheaper. So your Frost Claws is plus one strength, so you fight at strength six, AP minus two, and one damage. Each time the bearer fights, you make an additional attack with this weapon, and you can reroll foul wounds with this weapon as well. So it's decent enough, uh, the Frost Claws, for 15 points. Uh, then the Great Frost Axe is plus three strength, so you become strength eight, AP minus three, and D3 damage. The bearer can make an additional attack with this weapon, uh, on a turn in which it charged, so you'll get f regular will get four attacks on the charge with that. So, and there's no minus to the hit rolls, so it's a, a fantastic weapon. Really is a good one. You know, it's a vehicle. It will help hack down a vehicle. You know, multiple attacks come through. And then the thunder hammer times two strength, eight minus three, and it's a guaranteed three damage every time. Uh, but it's minus one to the hit rolls. But for space wolves, uh, three is to hit in close combat, then drops to four but then jumps back to a three plus on the charge uh, for the Space Wolves plus one to the hit rolls for them. So if, out of all the Space Marine chapters, Space Wolves are great uh, for taking any kind of weapons that have minus one to the hit rolls, so fun hammers, uh, power fists, that kind of thing. So it's all good. Any other great thing about these is loads of attacks, so you're more likely to get the hits come through. So, uh, Yep, as I was gonna say, so you're trying to see the combination here is you want, you gotta watch out for your points. You could end up pushing towards 300 points if you're not careful, so I, I don't take the launchers. That's gonna save you 20 points straight away. Uh, and then one of the models here, just on a lower sort of loadout, and this could be the guy that takes hits and dies, uh, protecting these four. So that's the kind of compromise I've reached there, but still want a nice bit of ability here to take out. The aim for these is to take out heavy infantry, vehicles and characters, to smash into something and to destroy those kind of targets. Uh, I know the opponent's going to try and shoot at these because the, this is the elite's choice and they're quick, so those thunder hammers are hopefully there to help out uh, deflect some damage coming in. So some of the special rules then, they should know no fear which will help a bit of morale. Bounding uh, lope here. Models in this unit can advance and charge in the same turn. So I've, I've been remembering that one, and it's proved to be very, very useful. You know, seven inches plus D6, looking at about 10 inch on average 
move, including your advance, 10, 11 inches, then a charge after that. This is the rule I've forgotten here. Death Frenzy. Roll a d6 each time model in this unit loses a wound. Uh, I half remembered it. I remembered this bit. On a 5+, plus, the wound is not lost. I've remembered that one okay. If model in this unit is slain in the fight phase, then once the enemy unit has finished making its attacks, you can attack with that model before removing it as a casualty, even if it has already attacked that phase. So, that is uh, very, very powerful rules here. Especially being able to attack again before you die. Storm Shield 3 plus Invon save. And also you got this here, Curse of the Wolf and Hunt. So, I like to try and... Well, we'll cover that in a moment, but uh, just cover these rules here first. Uh, just talking about where to place these on the battlefield. Curse of the Wolf and Hunt. You can reroll failed charge rolls for friendly space wolves, infantry, biker, and cavalry units whilst within six inches of this unit. So they are geared towards not just going and doing their own thing, but to be part of the battle line and helping the other assaulting units out. Uh, the range of this ability is doubled for Blood Claw units. I have a lot of Blood Claw units in my list, and so I like these guys here to hang around with them. And then Curse of the Wolf and Kill, you can make one additional attack for models from Friendly Space Wars, Infantry, Biker and Cavalry units within 6 inches of any unit of this ability when they make their attacks in the fight phase. The range of this ability is 12 inches for Friendly Blood Claw units. Wolfen are not affected by this ability, nor are units that made a charge this turn whilst within range of Curse of the Wolf and Hunt ability. So it's one or the other if, if you're in range of, of both. Again, the impression what may happen is uh, the first round, first turn you're going in, you're getting help with the charges, you know, units that are nearby, that ability, and then on to the next turn when the combat the units are stuck in combat and fighting away, then this plus one to attack kicks in. Which is, is good. So again, there's another incentive to, to cluster near other units. So... Trying to get these onto the, trying to get these delivered. The key for these is to try and keep them with no casualties, and then to deliver them into the opponent's battle line to cause as much damage as possible. If they start taking loads of casualties, their potency is gone. So you must try as much as possible to get them into close combat to reach a target, but to do it at full strength or as close to that as possible. So you could go down the route of putting them inside uh, a transport like, Oops, have a look, not the Storm Fang, like the Storm Wolf. So you can carry Wolfen and it's got space for 16, Wolfen take up two. Now you could go down the route but you're spending over 300 points then to transport uh, a unit that's 250 odd points. There's a lot of points there and your opponent's going to know that. They'll try and bring the flyer down as a priority and then these guys are kind of stuck. So instead, uh, recently, if you check out the recent battle report of Space Wars versus Orcs, uh, it went well for these and I incorporated these into the battle line but I made use of line of sight blocking terrain. So the placement of these, you need to be as wise as possible uh, and to place them where they're hidden from as many enemy guns as you can, and if they're out of sight, then they can't be shot at most of the time, as that's a good way of preserving them. And then they made uh, one move up the board, and on the second turn, they're able to reach into close combat. So uh, I was happy enough with their performance, uh, and they did they did really well, despite me forgetting uh, a number of the rules here for them. But you're in the middle of a game, and it's easily done. Like for example, the things that I forgot was uh, getting to fight if a model's removed, and this one here in the Great Frost Axe, when you charge, you get an extra attack with that. Uh, as well, easily forgotten, and that could have made could have made all the difference if you saw that melee as it took place. So it's those kind of rules. You must try and remember. All, so there's two two parts. This really you must remember all the rules for them, and then try and keep them at full strength until they reach uh, their target. So the delivery of them up the board. But uh, on on foot could be quick enough. Let's say one turn to manoeuvre, and then turn two potentially to get into close combat. And really, you're happy enough to charge them into anything. Uh, they'll happily charge into anything. But ideally, you want them to take out heavy infantry and vehicles. I think that's what they could smash through uh, pretty good. So this loadout here, this is chapter approved. Yeah, this is all updated. So I'm playing them at uh, Storm Shield and Thunderhammer. 
times 2, 92 points. Uh, a flat 28 points just with the standard ball from Claws. And then 28 plus 17 for the Great Frost Axe times 2 is 90 points. That's 210 points. So, yes, expensive enough, but just keeping them near 200 uh, there uh, with the option of just taking the standard Wolf Claws. If I still have spare points, I'll give them the Frost Claws just to add a bit more potency uh, there. But that, that's the combination. I think to illustrate these, I'm going to line them up now uh, against a mixture of targets just to try and illustrate uh, how effective they are at uh, different types of targets. Okay, so I've got a situation here. This is. Um, a, a semi recreation, partly not not entirely the same of the battle report that we played, but say you've got uh, a, a load of decent stuff here. Uh, usually, if it was a, a standard sort of unit, you'd maybe try, try and charge one of these. But with their ability to fight before they die, you know, this is a unit that once they're delivered into close combat, the odds are the opponent's going to turn on them and try and blow them away. So the idea is to let them cause as much damage as quickly as possible uh, before they're made. Uh, target priority. So I'm going to charge them into everything here. And the idea is to try and cause uh, some damage and cause more damage when we die, when the orcs get to fight back. That's the idea. So we'll see if they could take a bit of overwatch here. So, uh, stick bomb from Gut Stitcher. Misses. Custom shooters from the Mega Nobs. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> Uh, this is sorry, this is all extra shots with another hit. Falls to wound, just the one, and saved. Uh, no, I would have put that on a regular dude, so there's a wound has been taken on him. Uh, and then, because you've got to watch out for wound allocation, by the way, it's a five plus to see about forgetting rules. <laughs> five plus, no, all right, so it keeps that wound. So you've got to. That's what I'm saying. I, if, I can't just be the only person that, that this affects. When you use these guys, you've got to just write the rules down the back of your hand or something. Just remember all of these different little rules to add together to, to get the most out of these ones here. Uh, a bit of DACA from these, uh, these DACA guns. One hit, an extra shot, misses. Uh, threes for a wound. Foul wound. All right, so they're going to make it in. They've advanced, and, you know, they've moved and advanced. They're pretty quick across the board. Now charge in on 11. Okay, so I'm going to go in like, let's play it like, so you've got to think here how we're going to play this one. I think something like Thunder Hammer here. Something like that. Or even... I would say the Thunder Hammers will be great for taking these out and play it like this. Okay, happy enough. So, gonna get to fight first. I deliberately charge all of these, not expecting to wipe them out, but to cause as much damage as possible, and then when the counterattack comes, uh, then to uh, fight again. So, we'll try and put some wounds here on uh, the Gut Stitcher here. So that's Wolf Claws, three attacks. So the guy with the skull is the leader, by the way. Uh, so three attacks, and that's it, Orphan with the Wolf Claws. So three to hit, just the one. And strength five, toughness four, yep, yeah, so wound comes through. And it's gonna be AP minus one. So uh, Gut Stitch is just gonna take a wound. So keeping track like this. Yeah, just check the pain boy is toughness four, so that's fine. I'm just going to put proper wounds down here. So that's okay. I'm thinking of trying to take out the character later on. Uh, I want to deliver some damage here. Uh, so, it'd be handy to try and remove, let's say, I'm trying to take this character down here on the bike. So I'll put a, uh, my thunder hammer attacks from him into here and then this axe as well to try and finish him off. So, uh, Thunder Hammer attacks him. Uh, needing threes actually, it would, would be fours, but it's plus one attack on the charge. They've all hit. Be threes to wound. Two wounds come through. And I'll leave it at that because I reckon his axe can finish him off. That's going to be a total of, it's even minus three, so it's going to ignore the armor here and put six wounds onto this war boss. Which is almost 
almost wiped him out. That is a great result. She had half attempts to come I'll come on, re roll that. I'll say that's going to happen in a situation. Yeah, right. So that's him gone. Because now that frees him up. I don't have to move him to fight into there. So then, uh, see the damage. This damage is. Uh, it is terrifying. Here, three attacks into these mega knobs. Uh, they will hit. And just the one wound comes through. Uh, we're going to save here. Uh, nope. So that'll be three damage. Just checking across here. Yeah, just put him back. War boss. It's nine damage came through in total. Just going to see if sixes could have helped him out. Just the one six. No, so he is gone. And then the three damage here. Nothing. All right, so one of the mega knobs can disappear. Like so. This is all going according to plan here. This is a really good result so far. Now the two great axes. So uh, three attacks each. One of them's the leader. And then they charge. They're going to get this is another little rule to remember. Charged. Uh, tons of attacks. Uh, twos to hit. Threes to wound. Absolutely terrifying here. And then this is the saves, which I think just one save's been made. So five have got through. Mega knobs are in huge trouble here. Uh, D3 damage. So three damage on the first one. We'll see if Gut Stitcher helps out, which he does not. Uh, then the next one. Three damage on the next one. Gut Stitcher doesn't help out. Next one, two damage, and Gut Stitcher doesn't help out. And then three damage on the next one, gone. And yeah, that's the <laughs> flip off, wiped the unit out here. It's uh, gone. <laughs> it's gone way better than I thought it would do. All right, so end of close. I had to divert. I declared the attacks into here, so that's all finished now. So now the idea is Gut Stitcher. I should be able to still be able to illustrate this to you. Gut Stitcher fights back. But you see the flurry of attacks from these. If you can deliver them at full strength. Now, if, say I'd moved up the battlefield and I'd taken this damage here on the way in, the potency's gone and there's, there'd be no chance of wiping those targets out. So you must try and deliver them at full strength. Really put an emphasis on that. If it means hiding somewhere, perhaps uh, turn one, turn two, until you know some other units have been destroyed till the coast is clear and they're a bit more freedom to move out, then do that. If you're able to move along a piece of terrain like a line of sight blocking building that's what I use and it helped protect them from being shot at by other targets you know sort of sneaking them around as long as if you're burying them in amongst near other units or there's other units further up like Thunderwolf Cavalry the opponent's firing at them and their attention's taken away from these and that's another way as well you know giving the opponent something else to shoot at can add as protection but we'll fight back here with Gut Stitcher so uh, looking for minus one to the hit rolls, so two hits come through. And there's an extra attack here because I play them as guffs, which misses. Uh, and then it will be two, twos to wound. Both the wounds come through. So the damage coming through here. See, I've already allocated a wound to him. He has to take it. So it's AP minus three. So it will go straight through. We'll see what kind of damage it is. It's three damage. So five pluses to ignore. Ignore one, but it's not going to be enough. So I've lost this model. Lay him down because he's going to get to fight. That's an important rule to remember. Uh, I, I'm then going to allocate the last hit, and I can now tank that onto an invon save of three plus, which we pass. So this model's been slain, and now I'm going to attack back with him. Uh, so they will hit, and a wound comes through, and uh, Pain Boy is a six up save. So yeah, six up to ignore. Nope, and a six up to ignore his wound from earlier on. No, nope. okay, so wound taken. So I've illustrated it in a small way. I'd anticipate, I was anticipating that some of these mega knobs would survive and start bringing these down, but that's not the case. Um, <laughs> they've been wiped out here quite effectively. So it just shows you the, the potency of Wolfen. Terrifying uh, in close combat. They are a very, very heavy hitting unit for the Space Horse, for sure. But uh, as I said, if more models had have remained, or that war boss on the bike remained and started bringing these down, you get into fight back and you can take more and more models with you and literally rip a chunk out of the elite section uh, of your opponent's force. So, you know, for the orcs, these units here are some of the main uh, heavy hitting units in close combat, and the wolf in there virtually brought them all down. So, excellent stuff. So, just move these out of the way.
Then you've got your, your stratagems, you know, uh, uh, fighting again, free command points, use the whole unit to fight again, that kind of thing. So that's that option available as well. So we'll line them up now against uh, a vehicle. So we'll charge them in against this. This is quite tough going here. The bone breaker. 16 wounds to try and chew through, and it's toughness 8 as well. But it's a 4 up in one save, so if we can get past that toughness, then some damage can come through. Uh, again, we'll try and absorb a bit of overwatch. That's the other good thing, if you have other units nearby, they can charge in to try and preserve overwatch from going against them. Uh, but a bit of DACA first of all, which misses entirely. D6 shots of the big gun, 5 shots, bound to be a hit here. Yeah, there's 2 hits come through, 2 extra shots, which gets another hit. Threes to wound. They've all wounded. Right, bit of trouble now. We'll tank it on an inbun save. Three plus. Yeah, I think I've illustrated how you want other units to charge in first. Because they want to take they want to take damage on Overwatch here. I'm gonna to have to command reroll that one. Which we pass. Um I'm gonna take the damage on the claws here, I reckon. So I'll get a six up save. Pass that one. Phew, and then a six up again. Almost. And then 5 plus to ignore the damage, it's damage 2. There it is, I was hoping for a 5. So that sets me up nicely for close combat because this guy, if any casualties come in, it'll be him that dies first. Alright, so there you go. Uh, charging in. 7 inches. So then they go. We'll see if they have the potency here to smash this vehicle. This is a very tough vehicle here. So we'll go for the Thunder Hammers first of all. Need 3s. Couple of misses. Uh, strength. 10 actually. Yeah, because these are strength 5. So strength 5 here actually. So 3's to wound, fighting at strength 10. Yeah, 2 come through, go straight through, and it's going to be a flat 6 damage. So that'll put this battle wagon down to 10 wounds remaining. So, you know, we'll count the wounds, we'll get an idea of if it can destroy an average vehicle. Um, if this was an average, like a, a Chaos Rhino or something, then you've, you've over half killed it there. Um, see what these axes can do. One of them's the leader. There's the other one. And on the charges, they get an extra attack each. Just that little extra rule to add on. Uh, two's to hit. Wow. Uh, four's to wound. Yep. That is a very good result. Strength eight. So, yeah, four's to wound. Eight minus three. And then uh, all these D3 damages come through. So that's uh, two, six... Seven, eight, nine. Wow, nine damage. So one wound left. They have smashed up this vehicle here. And then the guy with the wolf claws. You'd be half tempted to come on reroll. Uh, one of those results there. But looking for twos and fives. No, nope. all right. So uh, no extra damage coming through. But almost destroyed that target. That's a very good result for them. But again, as I said earlier on, imagine if I'd taken some casualties on the way in. The potency is lost, so the key is to keep them at full strength as much as possible. I mean, one answer that could be to, to uh, take a bigger blob, take a unit of maybe seven. To keep the points cost down, you could just take them with the standard wolf claws. They can be the models that are absorbing the damage, because the potency really is the double thunder hammer and the double axe. That's where the, the, the damage is coming from. So to stop the opponent from trying to get to these, you could take some standard wolf and uh, there to bulk the unit out. It also means if these smash into hordes with the uh, orphan with the orphan claws there, uh, they'll they'll mash through those nice and quickly as well. So maybe a unit of seven, I reckon, uh, on foot will add a nice uh, bit of durability to the unit and help keep them at a sort of a potent level. But that'll push your points up to not too bad, about 270. So no, I think unit seven's uh, viable enough for sure. Uh, and then the option for moving the round is on foot. That's what I'm going to choose to do. So I don't want to spend any more points here on, on an expensive transport for them. But instead, use a bit of cunning, like a, like the like a wolf, the cunning of the wolf, uh, and manoeuvre them around the board uh, as cleverly and as sly as possible to get them into position to charge in uh, at there most potent, trying to keep them at full strength as much as possible. Check out the comment section below, see what other Space Wolves players uh, are saying about this unit here. Whether uh, in the comment section do you rate these as a unit or not, uh, any tips and tricks and tactics for them. Uh, so 
uh, see what other Space Wolves players, you know, ones of experience, are saying in the comment section below. Uh, and then it'd be a great way for other Space Wolves players to learn and pick up uh, some tips and tricks on how to use this unit more effectively. But there it is, units of uh, Wolfen here. One of my heavy hitting units of my new Space Wolves list, so keep a look out for them in our uh, games of Warhammer 40,000 that feature the Space Wolves. Um, keep a look out for more Tactica videos uh, for the Space Wolves and a new army, a new revamped list on the way uh, soon, all being well. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.